All right, a live view of Boeing Field where the Blue Angels are getting ready to take off. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling the need for speed. Can't wait for the Blue Angels, their final show of this Seafair weekend. I'm Angela Russell. Steve Rabel's going to take a little break, but stepping in, the uh, capable hands of Lieutenant Commander Todd Royals with the Blue Angels. Thanks so much for coming back. Oh, this is your you second me. year doing it this, is, right? It is, second and final year, but uh, I'm glad to be back. And this, without a doubt, is one of the highlights of our season, coming up here to Seattle for Seafair. So we could not be more excited to be here with you guys right now. Okay, so for those who haven't seen one of the shows on television, just take us through what we're going to see in terms of the start. It starts with Fat Albert, it right? It sure does. We got Fat Albert back. Fat Albert actually has a brand new paint job. Oh, really? Uh, so okay. we had to go through the beginning of the season with a uh, replacement we had earned for a couple months, uh, but we just gave that back to the Marines, and now we've got Fat Albert back. They're going to put on a 10-minute demonstration of some of the high-performance capabilities of the Lockheed Martin C-130 Hercules, uh, and then as he exits the show stage, in come the Jets, and you'll see Blue Angels 1 through 6. We've got that trademark Delta formation, which is all six aircraft, and they'll separate into the Diamond formation, which is 1 through 4, and then the Solos, Blue Angels 5 and 6, and they're going to demonstrate the maximum performance capabilities of the Boeing F-18 Hornet. And it looks like, as you just talked about Fat Albert, Albert. There, there it is, is, right there. That's correct. Live over Lake Washington right now. You know, we were tricked a little bit earlier because we thought we were hearing the blues, but it was actually one of the Super Hornets. It was. That is the latest and greatest aircraft that's rolling off the Boeing line, uh, the F-18F Super mm -hmm. Hornet. Um, and that is... Uh, uh, just a tremendous aircraft that's very versatile, uh, and that is probably one day what the Blue Angels will fly once the uh, the legacy F-18s that we fly uh, expire and then their service life uh, is discontinued. So, yeah, and I'm sure we'll be talking a little bit more about the Super Hornet a little bit later. But while Fowl Albert does the this 10-minute demonstration over Lake Washington, let's talk a little bit about. Some people may not realize this, but it's actually the Blue Angels. It's a Navy and Marine that effort. That is correct. Right? That is correct. The Marine Corps is actually a. Uh, um, is a part of the Department of the Navy. So we travel the country to help to represent over 540,000 active sailors and Marines who are deployed about the country, uh, about the world, uh, defending our freedom. So we'd like to demonstrate the pride, professionalism, and dedication to excellence that's uh, resonant in every service member, uh, not only Navy Marine Corps, but all branches of the United States service. So uh, it is truly an honor and a, and a privilege for us to do this on a weekly basis. Now let's talk a little inside baseball. See that the turbo props there. Tell yeah. us about, you wouldn't expect to see that, right, on such a big jet, but why why, did, why is the, that there? Yeah. The way that the turboprops, they've got four very powerful Pratt and Whitney engines that help to uh, transport all of our equipment. Uh, we are unique that we've got uh, our own C-130 as part of our organization. Most squadrons don't have multiple types of aircraft, uh, but because we travel so much, uh, the Marine Corps and the and the Navy has uh, elected to give us a, our own C-130. We've got uh, three C-130 pilots, and then we've got five enlisted crew members. We've got two flight engineers. Uh, we've got a flight mechanic, a load master, and a navigator. And we have that organic asset that is, allows us to travel every single weekend from March into November, and it carries all the people, parts, and equipment required for us to come to town with seven F-18s uh, and support that demonstration. And sometimes things do happen. I remember last year, I think Fat Albert had to make a run Fat for a last-minute repair. Had to do a, a last-minute uh, engine run for one of our F-18s. And then, unfortunately, Fat Albert had a maintenance issue when we were trying to leave that day uh, or the, the following Monday. And uh, they stuck around for a couple extra days until a part came for their aircraft. So, And these are old aircraft. We, uh, we paint them up nice blue and yellow and white and uh, make them nice and shiny, but these are no longer in service operationally. Uh, so we do get the older assets uh, that belong to the Navy and Marine Corps. The newest, the latest, and greatest assets are out there on the front lines. When, when this aircraft was in service, what was it mainly used for? I mean, we just saw it demonstrate a, some low flying. Tell us about, because this is, you know, not just for show. No, it absolutely is actually not. That what is a combat uh, proven aircraft. So uh, the C-130 is a tactical transport. So that aircraft was designed to bring people and parts and equipment into uninhabited terrain. You know, they can, uh, the Marines will go in there, they'll make an expeditionary airfield. And then, uh, you know, Fat Albert demonstrated that high performance climb capability as well as uh, at the end, they, uh, when they come back to Boeing Field, they'll demonstrate that maximum performance landing capability. All right, and as Fat Albert finishes up together, the, the jet's there from Boeing Field. So what happens, take us inside, what happens when the routine, before they actually get on board and get ready to take off for a show, what's the routine like? You know, we show up to the airfield about two hours prior to our takeoff time, uh, go into the briefing room, kind of sequestered, uh, and just get into that mental bubble of uh, going out there and putting on a safe demonstration. One hour prior to our takeoff time is 
is when the brief will actually take place, and uh, Captain McWhorter will walk the six demonstration pilots through the entire routine. Uh, they'll actually go over the communications, the radio calls, uh, the stick and throttle movements. Uh, so they visualize themselves in that demonstration inside the jet with their eyes closed. So that way when they come out and do it for real, uh, it, it's it's down to that muscle memory. And you have to go over it because but to, the weather could change and Absolutely. the routine could change depending yeah. on what the weather does. Like I said, that was one of the uh, one of the topics of conversa conversation last year was, oh, you know, there's some clouds out there. What kind of show <laughs> are you guys going to do? Uh, people don't realize we actually have five variations of our show. Uh, we have a high show, which needs about 10,000 feet of clear air. We've got a low show, which needs about uh, 5,000. And then we've got three variations of our flat show. But I'll tell you right now, there is no doubt in anyone's mind what show is going to yeah, be going on today. Right. We could not be more happy. Now, is there ever any? Are there ever any considerations when it, the weather is hot like this? I mean, not I mean, so in much terms here in Seattle. Pilots, it has to be really. You know, uh, our, our big concern, yeah, it's hot for the pilots. When they close the canopies, uh, the, there's an environmental conditioning system, an air conditioning okay. in, in the jet. It is still hot and demanding on them. They stay hydrated. Uh, more importantly, we're worried about the, our maintainers out there at Boeing Field. They're out there all day preparing those jets, as well as the spectators. You know, most folks aren't uh, accustomed to this type of heat. They come out, and they want to spend all day out on the water and watch the Blue Angels. And, uh, you know, if, if, if one person gets hurt because uh, they didn't protect themselves from the heat or sun, then, uh, you know, um, and that's a sad thing. So we want to make sure that everybody stays protected, uh, but is still able to enjoy a, a dramatic demonstration. And there they go. There go uh, one through four. And then a couple seconds later, you'll see Blue Angels five and six take off behind them. They'll take off to the northwest and we'll rendezvous into the Delta formation. All right. It won't be long until the show begins. So stay with us. The Blue Angels Air Show coming up next. Uninterrupted coverage of the Navy Blue Angels is brought to you by your Northwest Ford dealers. Stop by and see them today. Our live coverage of Seafair continues right now. You're watching Fat Albert finishing up the 10-minute demonstration over Lake Washington. And just a few moments, the Blue Angels are going to be taking to the skies over Lake Washington. With me right now, Lieutenant Commander Todd Royals. And Todd, why don't you introduce us to the team really quick? Okay. Well, actually, exiting right now, you've got our three C-130 pilots. You've got Captain Ben Blanton from Ventura, California. You've got Captain John Hecker from Huntsville, Alabama. And then uh, two of them are flying right now. And then our third one is actually in the tower over at Boeing Field, making sure that they launch and recover. Captain A.J. Harrell from uh, Frederick, Maryland. Uh, just getting airborne now is the six F-18 pilots, the Delta. You've got Captain Greg McWhorter in Blue Angel number one. He's the flight leader and commanding officer from Atlanta, Georgia. And as we said, he's on his fourth year on the team, uh, and he'll be leaving at the uh, at the end of this season. Blue Angel number two is Lieutenant John Hiltz. He's on his first year on the team. He's the right wingman from Fort Mitchell, Kentucky. Blue Angel number three is one of the Marine Corps representatives in the Delta formation. He's from Hemet, California, Captain Brandon Cordill on the left wing. Blue Angel number four is the other Marine Corps representative in the Delta Formation from Knoxville, Tennessee, the slot pilot and airborne safety observer, Major Brent Stevens. And his third year on the team is Blue Angel number five, Lieutenant C.J. Simonson from Coon Rapids, Minnesota. He's the opposing solo. He's also the operations officer. And in, uh, two years ago, he was uh, Blue Angel number seven, the narrator. Last year, he was uh, Blue Angel number six, the opposing solo. And then he's moved up to Blue Angel number five, the lead solo. And then in his second year on the team is Blue Angel number six, who was last year's narrator, Lieutenant Dave Tickle from Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, he gave me the ride last year. He Lieutenant did. Tickle, he was yes. uh, our advanced pilot and uh, performs all of our media and uh, VIP rides. Okay, awesome. And the person doing the narration today. And out there is uh, Blue year. Angel number seven, Lieutenant Mark Tedrow. Uh, he'll move into the Delta formation next year. He's from uh, uh, Charleroi, Pennsylvania, so his first year on the team. And then we've got uh, the rest of our support officers out here. We've got uh, Lieutenant Scott Adams from uh, Omaha, Nebraska. He's taken over my role uh, during the demonstration of helping out the narrator. Uh, and then we've got our administrative officer, Lieutenant Holly Taylor, over there with the air boss, making sure that the uh, we've got the sanitized TFR and the aerobatic box out there on the water is uh, clear of boats. And then out there on the log boom, we've also got our uh, ground safety observers, our flight surgeon, Lieutenant Jason Smith, and Lieutenant Commander Rich Mercado, who is our uh, our maintenance officer, as well as our public, affair, uh, uh, public affairs officer, Lieutenant Katie Kelly. What so. a team. Obviously, you see the pilots, you see, you see you, but you there's know. so many more people who go into there are. putting on a show. And how many total would you we say travel? We have 130 team members on the Blue Angels, and people don't realize that. They think of the Blue Angels, they think of one through six, <laughs> and that's it. They see, uh, they see a number eight on a blue flight suit, and, you know, 
know, some kids that uh, they don't realize, you know, how many officers are on the team. There's no number eight jet. Who are you? You must be <laughs> right. one of the backups. So I said, there's a lot of effort that goes into having those uh, six pilots get airborne every weekend from March until November and really safely there, all around the right. country. And really, there are no backups, right? There if are someone no backup is sick, pilots. it's just... Then we, the only, we'll fly with, you know, whatever pilot is sick or injured, uh, he won't fly that day. But if Captain McWhorter gets hurt or sick, uh, no one will go fly. So. I see. All right, and there so they are. They've separated into the, uh, the diamond and solos. Uh, so here come Blue Angel 5 and 6, and it's about to get pretty loud right overhead. Okay. Brace yourself. We're going to have some fun. We will. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> And that's one of the solo pilots. That right? is, that is, that uh, was Blue Angel number five. Uh, this is called the Opposing 360. So as I said, because this is a remote show uh, where the demonstration doesn't start from the airport, it starts airborne in front of the crowd. They'll transit into the uh, aerobatic box as a six plane, and then they separate. Uh, and then there for about is. the next 30 minutes, they'll do individual solo and diamond maneuvering. For the last 15 minutes of the demonstration, they'll join back up into the Delta formation and show you the precision of six F-18s all flying in one formation aerobatically. And the solo pilot, like the one you're seeing here, they really have a rough ride. I mean, it is. It is violent. Wild Absolutely. One. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm fortunate enough to come from the uh, the two seat F-18 community. I get to sit in the back uh, as a weapons system officer, uh, but that solo ride is uh, is violent. So here comes that trademark diamond formation uh, of the Blue Angel one through four. Uh, it's 18 inch wingtip to canopy separation. So if you see the left wingman there, his canopy looks like it's sitting right under the wing. It, no kidding, is it's 18 inches. And then you see Blue Angel number four tucked up into the slot there, uh, right underneath the wings of Blue Angels two and three. So. And are the pilots when they're when they're flying this close together? Are they just making? hitting certain markers or are they actually doing a visual check? They're doing visual checks. You know, uh, there are certain paint scheme uh, marks on the aircraft that they're looking to line up appropriately uh, so that they know they're in the correct position. So they'll fly different checkpoints. They'll come back, watch it on video, give themselves an honest assessment. Were you really flying the checkpoints the way you're supposed to? How does it look on video? Yeah, you know what? Um, I, I need to try harder tomorrow. Uh, we'll make it. We'll make that make it much better. Uh, now here comes uh, the signature move of the solo pilots, the opposing knife edge pass. They're going to roll into an angle of bank and pass uh, each other about 50 feet on this maneuver. Canopy to canopy. You take a still shot. It looks like the uh, the two jets are connected by the nose. Let's see. Boom. Oh, and there it was. <laughs> so you can't blink or you're going right, to miss it. Right. Do not blink. <laughs> Fantastic. What's so great about this year seeing this high show from the beginning it, they're much easier to spot and it's just it really is great yeah you know that that the the clear blue background uh, of that uh, cloudless sky. Uh, we've got tremendous smoke oil that uh, is a paraffin-based uh, biodegradable smoke. Uh, not only is it aesthetically pleasing for the demonstration, it helps the folks uh, look out and they can pick up the jets easily. More importantly, it's a safety factor for the aircraft. You can see that blue paint job on a blue sky doing 400 miles an hour three miles away from each other, and those solos have to pass uh, mm -hmm. very close to each other to make uh, to make the maneuver look the way it's intended. So that smoke helps them to pick each other up visually as well. All right, and they are climbing high above Lake Washington now. What are they getting ready to do? That is what's known as the diamond roll. So again, all three aircraft rolling as one in a graceful yes, I rolling love maneuver. This. And as they clear the flight line, in come the solos. So that was one of the goals this year is to, you know, we don't want any dead time during the demonstration. It just, it wants, we want it to be 45 minutes of action packed, uh, you know, entertainment, uh, demonstrating the pride, professionalism, and, and precision of this team. So uh, as soon as the diamond exits the flight line, in come the, sh the solos for their next maneuver. So this is the opposing inverted to inverted pass. They're gonna roll upside down, push negative uh, 1G right there. They're going to cross with a 360-degree uh, aileron, aileron roll, and now they're going to do a negative 3G push as they climb away from the ground and exit the show line. That is the most painful maneuver is that the really? solos do, without a doubt. It doesn't. That's the thing. The ones that look the most painful, really, you know, it, it's just some quick wing snaps. But that negative G, and you see some of the best civilian performers out here: Sean D. Tucker, Kirby Shambly. Those guys put themselves through just as much of a ringer in those little aircraft. And when you say negative G, what does that mean? Well, we're sitting here at one G, one positive G. The force of yeah. gravity is pulling everything uh, down towards the ground and, and through the Z axis of our body. Uh, I'm sorry, the Y axis. But if you roll inverted and push away, all that blood is trying to go to your head. Uh, which is negative g-forces against I your body. See. This is the diamond aileron roll. All four of them will roll simultaneously away from each other and then join back up uh, 
into the diamond formation. You mentioned an adjustment of the routine. Are there always adjustments before the season begins in the routine? You know, we try and uh, we're always striving uh, to, for improvement. Um, you know, we get feedback from ex Blue Angels, folks that were on the team decades ago, uh, and we're looking for that constructive criticism for those that went before us. How can we make the show better? But for the most part, it is a tried and true safe demonstration right. that's been tested. And, you know, regardless if it's the first time you're seeing it or it's the thousandth time you've seen this demonstration, it's still all inspiring. So, um, but what we're looking to do is just, just those minor tweaks and refinements to make sure that we're putting, out, you know, we're putting on the best show possible okay. and this is the uh, the Fortis where uh, Blue Angel number five is going to roll inverted this is another one where if you get that uh, that still shot it looks like both aircraft are sitting on top of each other in a mirror uh, image formation and it looks like the landing gear is that's down, it right? that's what's known as the dirty can uh, dirty configuration we've got the landing gear and tail hook down uh, and that tail hook is what makes uh, our aircraft unique in that we stop and land on aircraft carriers uh, just using that uh, that tail right. hook to stop and these jets we're seeing have been used. They've that been is, in that service. That is true. So these jets are in excess of 20 years old, uh, but they were combat-capable frontline aircraft. Uh, they've exceeded their carrier life, uh, but they still have plenty of flight hours left on them. So the Navy allocates them to the Blue Angels. We paint them up uh, blue and gold. We, put a, we take the gun out, and we put a smoke tank up in the nose of the aircraft that holds all that smoke oil. Uh, do a cu another couple of refinements to the airplane, and we take them around the country and, uh, and perform our demonstrations with them. And if these jets were needed in a combat situation now, they could even be converted back, right? It is possible, it's yes. Possible, you yeah. know, uh, it would have to be a very serious... Uh, serious uh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> to, to strip them down uh, and, and put them back into combat-capable uh, configuration, but that is a possibility. All right, here's another look at that. You call it the dirty... The dirty this is going to be the diamond dirty loop. So diamond now they're going to do an entire loop, all four aircraft, uh, with their landing gear and tail hooks down, so. And does that present a different challenge when the landing gear is down? Oh, absolutely. The airplane flies completely different. Uh, the handling characteristics are different, but uh, that is what all of our training goes into so that uh, when we take the show on the road publicly, uh, they, these pilots know this F-18 better than any other pilots probably in the world uh, with the number of flight hours they get. And uh, we don't have an unlimited uh, number of aircraft. We only have, uh, typically, a, a jet gets assigned to a pilot for the season. So he knows that jet inside and out, uh, and they can tell if they have to get into an alternate jet. It, it handles a little bit differently. So they know these, these jets very, very well. Uh, and when we go to Southern California and all Central, we do uh, 120 training missions uh, before our certified first public demonstration. So a lot of time and effort goes into uh, a safe demonstration. Well, if there's a kid at home dreaming of one day being a Blue Angel, I mean, you don't necessarily have to go through the Navy, right? Uh, no, you can be in the Marine Corps uh, mm -hmm. as well. But And haven't you had an Air Force? We have not, no? not, okay. not in the Blue Angels. Okay. Not, uh, we do have exchange pilots. So there are Air Force uh, F-15, F-16 pilots that serve in Navy squadrons and vice versa. We send our F-18 pilots over to train and fly with the Air Force as well. But no, all of the demonstration pilots in the Blue Angels uh, are either Navy or Marine, or Marine Corps. Corps. Okay. That's correct. Now, how do you get to, like, how do they choose who gets to be the solo pilot? You know, we're looking at these solo pilots doing some yeah. amazing things and they're having the wild ride. Um, a lot of it is, um, you know, the seniority of where the uh, where the pilot applicant uh, is in his career. Uh, some folks just, this is only a temporary job for us. You know, mm -hmm. if we could blue angel, be Blue Angels forever, uh, I'm sure a lot of us would love to do that. Right. But unfortunately, <laughs> we came, uh, we've got it. I don't want to say unfortunately, but uh, we need to continue to progress. We're all career naval officers as well as our enlisted. Uh, most of the officers are on the team for two to three years and our enlisted are on the team anywhere from two to four years. Mm -hmm. So we came from blue, uh, flying gray airplane operational fleet squadrons and we're going to go back back to those. So uh, if a guy has the time to do three years on the team, then he'll be the narrator for one year. And then based on uh, his uh, performance and personality, we'll determine where he goes into the Delta formation. All right. Well, tell us about what we're about to see. Okay. Now. This is the Blue Angel single Farvel today. We've got uh, Captain McWhorta rolling inverted, and then you've got the other three wingmen joining on him uh, back into the diamond formation. Pretty impressive. Now, is Captain Order communicating with the other pilots right now? He sure is. Every stick and throttle input that he makes, uh, prior to him uh, adding that input, he'll make a call over the radio, whether he's adding power, coming left, a little pull, things of that nature. And then he'll say smoke on or smoke off as appropriate. And then we'll go back and we'll debrief. This 45-minute demonstration takes about an hour and a half to debrief, going through still frame to make sure that all the maneuvers are being done correctly. Really? That's still? I mean... Absolutely. You go through Slow every motion. frame. Not every single every, frame. Wait. We'll fast forward to the maneuver. We'll say, okay, this is the goal of this maneuver. And then we'll watch through that frame by frame to make sure that all the rolls take place and that the aircraft cross right where they want to. 
uh, and we're putting out that, that best demonstration possible. We're always striving for the perfect demonstration. We'll probably never get there, but the day that you give up on striving for, for, for perfection You're in uh, trouble. is when right. bad things are going to happen. Exactly, so. right. Well, we certainly always think it's perfect, though, from our vantage point, well, then, but we appreciate the effort. Well, we appreciate the support. Again, see, uh, as I said, Seattle and Seafair is without a doubt one of the highlights of our season. The hospitality, the support of, uh, of our organization and all, and all uh, service members here when we come to Seattle it is second to none. Uh, between just walking down the street on our way to the parking garage to get our cars, uh, back at Boeing Field, you know, there are more spectators at Boeing Field just watching the aircraft taxi out and take off than some air shows have uh, in entirety. So wow. uh, the folks here in Seattle are, are, are stupendous and we, we couldn't ask for, for better support and, and, and more tremendous hospitality. No. And what is this? This is uh, what's known as the Blue Angel Fan Break or Echelon Parade. They're all stacked on a 45 degree bearing line down off of Captain Borders wing. Uh, in a right echelon formation. And they're all flying different checkpoints. So uh, right on uh, the wingtip has a, a specific yellow uh, tick mark on it. And they're trying to line that up with each aircraft. And the number four pilot is trying to line everybody else's helmets up look and make that. it look like a straight line that they're all welded together. You know, you know what I think is amazing about the Blue Angels? No matter how many times you see them, it just never seems to get old. Well, it's, then, it's all, then we're doing our that job. bit of awe, right? Perfect. That <laughs> is what we're striving for. Now this is your, you have a season, obviously. You do how many shows during the season? We do about 70 flight demonstrations okay. in 35 different cities. So a traditional air show is Saturday, Sunday. So we typically leave Pensacola on a Thursday. We'll get into town, we'll do our checkpoint flight. So all the folks here in Seattle probably weren't expecting to hear blue jets raging around for three hours on Thursday, but uh, that is part of uh, our, our standard operating procedure so that we can come to town and put on a safe demonstration. Thursday we'll, we'll look for checkpoints, look at obstructions, see how our demonstration, because we don't alter the demonstration demonstration uh, unless absolutely required but we try and take the same template around the country to 35 different cities and put on a safe standardized show so Thursday we'll fly around we'll look obviously here you've got uh, you know Columbia Tower you got the antennas out there uh, the Space Needle so we've got some obstructions they'll, they'll have to alter the demonstration slightly but for the most part it's all the same maneuvers uh, just kind of our repositioning turns are, will be a little bit different based on terrain or things of that nature so we'll fly Thursday we'll practice on Friday we'll put on a demonstration Saturday Sunday and then if we can we'll fly back to Pensacola on Sunday night and we'll debrief the demonstration when we get home unfortunately you know here we've got to go we're gonna stay one more night which okay. is fortunate for us but we're gonna head back to Pensacola in the morning okay gotcha and how many more shows in your season like when does it wrap up our show season wraps up the first week in November okay so, so you still have a little bit of a ways we to go. sure <laughs> do we've got about a dozen more air shows to go now this is the left echelon roll. So before they were in a right echelon formation, now okay. they're in a left echelon formation. Still lined out uh, one through four down the line, uh, but they're gonna go into a nice climbing, dramatic, graceful rolling maneuver in that echelon. And graceful is a good word for a lot of the maneuvers. It is. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's a, a very dynamic demonstration where it goes from a graceful maneuver. As soon as they finish this, then they're going to go into a lot more of the, uh, the, the dramatic and, uh, and energetic maneuvers uh, that the, the diamond pilots uh, are known for. But the solos, uh, as soon as the diamond exits in a graceful maneuver, in come the solos kind of right in your face. Shake so things up, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Trying to ke catch people uh, off, their, uh, off their toes. And this is Blue Angel number five coming in. Okay. Uh, it won't really work for us today based on where we are, but this is the sneak pass. Oh, I love, yes. And it worked. So we get, uh, we get the, the diamond out there in the left echelon roll. Everyone looks up. Uh, they're following that graceful maneuver. And then Blue Angels five and six sneak up on you. Wow, so. they do. I tell you what, you at home, you should see the folks, our crew behind the camera here. <laughs> it worked. They were. It was sneaky, and it was so cool to see how close that jet got to the water. How close? Well, do you know the exact? He's 50 amount? feet. 50 you know, feet. Uh, again, that's uh, he steps it down throughout the week, uh, and on Thursdays, that's one of the practices that we do to make sure that there are no obstructions. But that's in his maneuver manual, uh, and he's cleared down to 50 feet at about 650 miles an hour. And not all the shows you do are above the water. The shows. Can be oh, a little bit different, oh, right? When absolutely. You're yeah, we just came from Twin Falls, Idaho. And you asked us how the heat affects us. Um, not so much, obviously, um, you know, personal effects, but uh, performance on the aircraft. Yes. Uh, the heat uh, and the elevation. Here, we're, we're not very high. Mm -hmm. In, uh, in Idaho, we were up at 4,000 feet. And then with the heat, it was in excess of 100 degrees each day. Oh, my goodness. So the density altitude pushed us up almost to 7,000 feet. So you can imagine the performance characteristics are much different on the aircraft at, the, at that heat and that altitude. 
and this is the five plane line of rest loop. This is, uh, if you ask any of the demonstration pilots, they'll probably tell you this is one of the most challenging maneuvers uh, to do an entire loop in a, in a, in a straight line uh, with each other flying off of Boss McWhorter there uh, in, in the number one jet in the middle. So you've got uh, two, and, uh, two and five on the right wing, and then you've got three and four on the left wing. So four and five are looking inboard through the other aircraft, and, and they're trying to make it look like, again, all five jets are welded together uh, in one graceful loop. And so still a lot of, like you were saying, a lot of visual, they have to do a lot of actually looking, not just hitting the marks oh, on the, this kind of maneuver. Absolutely. They are, you know, the only pilot that really looks uh, at his instruments is Captain McWhorter. Everyone else is flying off of feel and flying off of what they're looking at on the other aircraft. That is amazing. And then they are seeing the smoke again. It created a great view when they were doing it, but as you mentioned, it has a purpose. Absolutely. So they'll exit to the left and then he'll detach Blue Angel number five. So you see he sneaks there under, uh, under the smoke and that's Blue Angel number five right there at the bottom. He'll tell him to detach. He'll call clear. And now there he's going to go join on Blue Angel number. Uh, he won't join. He'll go back into an opposing maneuver with Blue Angel number six. But those solos, you always got to wonder, what are they going to do Where next? Where are they next? <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's fantastic. And you can actually meet one of the Blue Angels if you go to Pensacola, right? If you travel to Pensacola, you, you, sure you can do. meet we, one of the Blue uh, Angels. We practice in Pensacola each week on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And then uh, depending on our schedule, uh, we strive to get over to the uh, National Museum of Naval Aviation. Uh, and, and meet some folks there for uh, for a little bit. So. And do you find that people travel just to, so they can Absolutely, do that? they sure do. You know, we get the opportunity to travel the country and we see billboards for the, the Museum of Naval Aviation down in Pensacola. It's becoming quite uh, a tourist attraction there in the Panhandle. Uh, and it, it is a, a world-class uh, establishment that they've got there. So this is the four-point hesitation roll. Each aircraft is gonna roll 360 degrees, but they're gonna pause after each 90. So there's 180. 270 and then 360 degrees of roll and they cross each other in the inverted position. So again, the timing, they'll exit behind the crowd and then uh, in come the diamond formation for their next maneuver. This one's gonna be the vertical break. Uh, this is, as we said, one of those very dramatic maneuvers. Uh, so all the maneuvers they, that the diamond has just done are all the formation maneuvers where they pretty much stay together the entire time. Now for the next several maneuvers, they're gonna be their breakout maneuvers. So in this vertical break, he'll pull them into a climb. He'll say, ready, break, and all four aircraft will separate uh, into kind of a starburst formation yeah. and then they'll, they'll and rendezvous back in front of the crowd. Love this one. Look at that. Yeah, so when they zoom out, you'll be able to see all those smoke trails. Look at that. So there you go. That's why that smoke is so important. Did you see how the aircraft just disappeared? Yes. But now in the, the next 30 seconds, all four of those jets are going to be rendezvoused again. And that's how those guys will be able to pick each other out. Wow. I really think that looking at that sea of blue and seeing them streak across the sky. And how long is the show in total? Uh, it's about 42, 42 minutes, minutes, you know, give or take a couple seconds there. So Fat Albert has his 10 minute demonstration. And then, uh, as I said, we're trying to compact the demonstration, keep it as tight as possible. I've got, they've gotten it down to about 38 minutes right now because we're doing a uh, remote show. Uh, so they don't have the full takeoff and landing maneuvers. Uh, but our traditional demonstration uh, over an airfield is about 41, 42 minutes. You know, it's our, one of our reporters um, flew in one of the jets earlier this week, Monique, yeah. and she talked about, she said, I don't know how people do anything after flying in one of those things because it's so draining on your body. It is. And for her, that was a, a short ride. But you think about putting on a show like this, physically, what is it like for them? Or are they just so used to it? Oh, we're, we're used to it. You know, it, it is all uh, physical training. Um, and, you know, in order to come to the Blue Angels, you have to, do, in order to even apply, you have to have 1,250 tactical jet hours in either an F-18 or a similar tactical aircraft. So the maneuvers that we're doing here, um, they're very dynamic. Um, they're, some of them are unique, but most of them are, are coordinated tactical techniques that are you use, given to all uh, tactical aviators. So uh, the G-forces are no more than what what a fleet aviator is used to. So, uh, and then between the 120 training sorties that we fly in El Centro, uh, it, this is all, it's, it's, it's old hat for us. Right, cool. and you know, not only the training, but the reality is in a combat situation, you might have to be in the jet for hours at yeah, a time. Yeah, you know, I think my longest mm -hmm. mission was uh, about seven hours. Seven uh, hours. Strapped into an F-18, so. Again, uh, this 40, 42 minutes uh, is it's uh, it's a workout, it, right. but uh, they're they love it. Um, 
Did you guys compare who pulled more G's on their ride, you or her last you year? You know what? We did enough to give me an idea. There you go. <laughs> Might, uh, I think I did pretty well. Though. I have what a little wager did? on our hands. Is it just seven sound about right? Did seven I would seven? be. That's, that I is I very seven. commendable. All right, the world only closed on me for a few seconds and go. it opened back up when Perfect. you do those hick maneuvers at the rookie hick maneuver, right? That's it. What the yeah, rookies have to do. Yeah, anti-G straining maneuver. Exactly. So this is the, the diamond's barrel roll break. <laughs> so Captain McWhorter just did a barrel roll with the entire four plane formation. And then as they round out the bottom, they're going to split apart into four separate directions uh, very gracefully. And then they'll rendezvous again for another diamond maneuver. And people don't realize when they think you're going to do any kind of ride, they say, don't eat anything, don't eat anything. But reality is it actually is good to eat a little bit of oh, something, absolutely. right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, you do not want to uh, do this on an empty stomach or be drained or fatigued. It's already hard enough to work out as it is. Uh, you need to, to feed your body, fuel the machine so that you can handle the, uh, the G-forces. Unfortunately, some folks have a, uh, might get an upset stomach, and that's, you know, if you ate something, you might get it back. Right. But we, we, uh, we recommend bananas. Now this is, uh, you know, they demonstrated the high performance, high speed capabilities of the F-18. This is where they're going to demonstrate the slow speed handling characteristics. This is known as the section high alpha pass. They're going to slow these aircraft down to about 120 miles per hour and they'll park them up uh, on their tails. Uh, again, this is a maneuver used by all uh, tactical aviators in a dogfight type situation. Right. You know, there's times when the guy with the fastest airplane has the advantage, but there's also times where the guy with the slowest airplane has the advantage. Uh, and this is something that uh, all F-18 pilots are trained to do in our syllabus. We just do it with two airplanes simultaneously. And so. you served in Iraq or Afghanistan both? I've been to both, actually, okay. yeah. I uh, did three cruises on the USS Nimitz, uh, 2003 and 2005, over to Iraq, and then in 2009 uh, over to Afghanistan. On and the your, in your position, you said you, you were the weapons? Weapons system officer, exactly. Yeah. So the two-seat F-18 that you just saw uh, demonstrated here today uh, with the F-18F demo, that was that's the aircraft that I flew in the fleet, and I actually just found out two weeks ago that I'm heading uh, back to an F-18F squadron over in Japan. Um, so, yes, the the Super Hornet, and it's got uh, two aircraft, uh, two aircrew in that airframe uh, to to run all the sensors and capabilities that it that it possesses. Now, this is the low break cross. So, all four diamond pilots came from behind the crowd. They separate into four different, basically vectors. They'll drive out to a mile and a half uh, away from each other. Again, with that smoke on, so they can see each other. Uh, they're going to turn in. One and three will cross with each other. Two and four will cross with each other. So now the jets are about four miles apart from each other. And the goal of this maneuver is to cross at center point with all four aircraft look like well, they're stacked. Yes. That's good. You know, there was a lot of talk earlier this year about, you know, budget cuts and whether the Blue Angels should be able to continue. Why are the Blue Angels so important? You know, um, we maintain an all-volunteer force, um, and we travel the country to get people excited and inspired about serving their country. Uh, and I know this organization certainly did it for me, and that's why I'm sitting here today, because I want to be able to share my story and hopefully inspire others to follow in our footsteps. But, uh, you know, the Secretary of the Navy says it, uh, Fleet Forces uh, Commander says it, that the Navy gets more than their money's worth out of, out of, of the Blue Angels. Uh, so you will not see us go anywhere anytime soon. So that's how you were inspired. You saw a Blue Angel show? I lived three miles away from an airport, uh, a naval air station. Uh, my grandfather was a naval aviator. My father was a mechanic in the Navy. Uh, and I got to go to Blue Angel air shows as a child. And I said, I, I want to do that one day. I never knew I wanted to be a Blue Angel. I just knew I wanted to serve in the military, in the Navy. And I wanted to fly. And the opportunity presented itself to be, be a part of this organization. And uh, I wanted to share my story. Family must be proud. They are. They're excited. <laughs> All right, what are they setting up for now? Okay, the diamond is setting up for the tuck under break. Now, see this where the camera's in a unique position, but this is what's known as the tuck over roll. If you were right there at center point, Blue Angel number five is actually hiding on the outboard of Blue Angel number six. So for some folks out there, you can't tell that there's two airplanes. Oh, okay. So it looks like one that they're gonna roll simultaneously and, and, and break apart. And that is a real jaw dropper for folks that did not realize that there were two airplanes there. <laughs> right. So right there, you can see they roll as one oh. and they separate. And that gets some of the most oohs and ahs out of our air shows if you're standing in the right spot. So they're going around. That was their last solo maneuver. 
They're going to exit in front of the crowd, and then in comes the diamond for the tuck under break, and then out of that, they're going to join into the delta formation for about the next 15 minutes. Oh, I was about to say, it's not over, is it? Oh, no, <laughs> no, <yet>. no. <laughs> Not at too all. Much fun. Yeah, and it's great. You know, you've got the folks down here watching the boat races. Uh, you get to watch an air show and then stick around, enjoy the rest of the festivities down here on the water. And look front. at that tweet. A nice comment there. Blue Angels are incredible well, as we always. We appreciate the support. <laughs> Again, we know, you know, this is our 66th season. Uh, we know that we come to this team to maintain a legacy and, and continue on the tradition, and we're always striving to uh, to, to make people proud of, of, of your men and women uh, in, in uniform. So. Oh, look, we got a compliment for the Fat Albert paint job. There you go. There you go. Fantastic. <laughs> That's awesome. That, for the Diamond Pilots, is along with that line of breast loop, is probably the other most difficult maneuver. And what right makes there. it difficult? Just, just the stick inputs, and uh, you know that it, it looks graceful, but it is very dynamic inside the cockpit, making sure that all aircraft, because they started together, they actually break apart and then mm -hmm. kind of come back together at the same time. Uh, just making sure that you put your airplane in the right piece of sky at the right time, because there's a guy right next to you that's counting on you to do right, that. Right, absolutely. Uh, and, and not swap paint. There you go, there's five and six joining. And it's called the diamond formation when the, they come together. Well, the, del the delta, the diamond is one through okay. four, and then uh, five the and six are the solos, and then the delta, that triangle gotcha. formation, uh, is all six joined together. So again, we'll start out with some just aerobatic maneuvers rolling together as one in the, uh, the diamond roll, and then they'll go right into the breakout maneuvers where all six jets We'll simultaneously break apart, rendezvous very quickly, put on another demo, uh, another maneuver, break apart, rendezvous, and hopefully just keep people's uh, necks craned to the air, jaws dropped, and, uh, and, and just putting a smile on everybody's face out here. Well, as you know, many of these events like Seafair are planned way in advance, and every year we wait to say, okay, are the Blue Angels coming again? Are the Blue Angels coming again? What is it like? For, what, what are the pilots and the rest of the Blue Angels crew enjoy about being in Seattle? What are some of the favorite things? You know, just like I said, the hospitality, the support, it makes us so proud to do what we do when we can come to town uh, and see the smile that we put on uh, young and old alike. You know, you get the kids standing there in the hotel lobby as we uh, as we check in, um, just just all inspired, as well as the grandparents right next to them who are just as all inspired. And then, you know, the folks out there at Boeing Field uh, lining the fences, as I said, just to, to watch the pilots uh, head out to the jets, take off, land and come back in. The support here is, is absolutely phenomenal. Now, in some situations, when you go to different communities, you're actually able to maybe visit hospitals or schools? We sure do, yeah. That's uh, one of the great things that we had set up here. We've got uh, quite a few groups over there at the Museum of Flight, mm -hmm. some summer camps that we got to go speak to. Our flight surgeon made it into uh, some of the local hospitals uh, to bring a little piece of the air show to those that can't make it out. And that's one of the things that we do every single weekend. Every Friday morning is dedicated to some of that community service and getting out and spreading the, uh, the word of the Navy Marine Corps as a recruiting agent asset but also we know that not everybody wants to do this but if we can inspire somebody to just pursue their dreams don't take no for an answer you know dedicate yourself to to a goal and, and don't don't give up until you achieve it That's a good uh, message. whether whether you're, you're you're serving your country uh, or just your community um, that is our, our, our ultimate mission there worthy message for sure and so if someone has a group or, and they are interested in having the Blue Angels come, what do they do? Do they contact your office? <laughs> That's it. You know, okay. you've, uh, I'm the events coordinator, so one of the... Oh, uh, so my, we to get to know you. Has, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, uh, I get to guy, be the guy that does all the final preparation once we get all the requests. But the, those deadlines were due last week uh, for our 2014 show season. We announced 2013 last year, so we'll be back for Seafair next year. Uh, but we're going to craft the 2014 schedule here in the next couple weeks. Uh, but they have to submit those through the Navy Office of Community Outreach. It has, their show site has to get approved by the FAA. So there are a lot of competing factors uh, to determine where the Blue Angels put on an air show, as well as uh, the Navy Recruiting Command. You know, does that uh, community have uh, the desired target audience that uh, the Navy's looking to get out there and, uh, and reach out to? Um, and then, you know, obviously, if they've got sponsors, and is it a well-established air show? That's so this beautiful. is the Fleur de Lis. The diamond solos break apart. Now, this is impressive. The diamond yes. breaks apart, and while they all continuously execute a loop, they're going to join back up into that diamond formation in the inverted position uh, as they exit that loop. So there go five and six exits behind the crowd. And then here you go, right back on the top. They're separated, but as they pass the top of that loop, I guess they got too high. He couldn't uh, pan that high with the camera. There you go. Now they're <laughs> yeah. back joined into the diamond formation. Uh, that is isn't. Beautiful. And it's, it's awesome.
Yeah, you think about, obviously, the the Blue Angels are representative of the Marine Corps, the Navy, and so many others who have the skills to do what they're doing. But you're not just selected on the skill when you want to be a Blue Angel, right? It's you're an ambassador. Exactly. There's almost a component of Absolutely. PR, kind of, right? Absolutely. You know, um, people say, hey, you, you know, the best of the best or whatever. That That's, uh, we feel honored that people, uh, you know, think that way of the Blue Angels, there are a lot of great pilots out there that probably just didn't have the desire to travel as much as we do uh, around the country or, or, or uh, didn't want to do this job as a Blue Angel. But uh, we've got the, the passion for flying, the skills uh, to, 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 to do the demonstration, but also that desire to get out there and, and tell the story of how we got to where we were or where we are and hopefully inspire those to follow in our footsteps right. and, and most importantly represent those that are overseas uh, and share the story of those guys uh, and girls that are, are out there protecting our freedoms, defending this nation uh, so that we can enjoy events like this every year. And what I'm amazed, I, what, what struck me last year, the fact that one of the pilots actually narrates the show and does a good job. They do a great job. Yeah, like yeah. They're narrating, they're doing public speaking. Yeah, he's not a professional jet, right? uh, radio personality. He is an F-18 pilot uh, from the fleet, uh, came off a of deployment. He was an instructor back in uh, Lemoore, California, along with the, uh, the, the Super Hornet demonstration folks. Uh, he came to us, and then uh, we hand him a stack of note cards, say, memorize this. <laughs> and uh, there's, there's a couple great uh, professional air show announcers in the industry that lend their help to come out and help him, uh, you know, make sure that, uh, that his voice inflection and, and, and just he keeps the audience kind of on their toes and, and grasp into the demonstration with his voice uh, to tell the story of what's going on in the air. So we take a lot of a great deal of pride in our in, in every aspect of our show, whether it be the ground show uh, or even our narrator. Uh, everything is critiqued and we're striving for that perfect show. The music? I'm hearing we the music. We did, uh, yep. We, uh, we revamped quite a bit of the music this year, so hopefully we get some positive feedback there on Twitter or Facebook if folks like the music that uh, we've selected this year. Yeah, let us uh, know what you think of the music. Right? Absolutely. Now you guys, do, what do you say? This is my favorite song. Let's do this. How yeah, does it work? You know, people, uh, we tell the squadron, hey, we're looking to uh, change some of the music, throw some songs out there. Where do you think a song might look good in the demonstration? And then uh, we'll, we'll take a little snippet of it and see where it looks best with the maneuver. Now, does the show always end with the same song and begin with the end? Or I, I don't recall. No, no? not necessarily. Okay. We changed the startup song. Uh, we changed this uh, this song this year as well. Um, and then we even changed our Taxi Back song this year. So about 85% of the music is new this year. I'm so trying to hear what this is. What is this? This song? is a little Kings of Leon. Okay. So this is the loop break cross. You saw the entire Delta formation did an entire loop. And then as they're pointed pure vertical nose down, Captain Porter says, smoke on, ready, break. And they go out in six different directions now. Uh, and they'll go out to three miles, and then they'll do a one-half Cuban 8 and point back towards show center point. So you can imagine, if you look around, uh, you can see everybody's got their smoke on. If mm -hmm. you uh, can crane all the way around, you'll be able to see all six individual smoke trails. You can see the, the three off to the north, and oh, then yeah. there's three off to the south. So they're at their furthest six miles apart from each other, and all six aircraft are going to come, and they're going to converge on center point, uh, doing about 400 miles an hour each, and they're going to try and cross and make it look like all six jets are stacked right on top of each other. Okay, let's see it. You know, it's, you talk about going three miles out, and I'm thinking, yeah, that probably took, what, 20 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> <Max>. <laughs> <laughs> we can get somewhere in a hurry. Yes, for sure. And you actually, the pilots actually fly their jets to the show, right? We sure mm -hmm. do, yeah. We do not have uh, any, you know, transport backup transport pilots. These don't get put on a truck. They get flown to each show site. So we're going to fly all the way back to Pensacola tomorrow morning. We've hired a tanker uh, to come drag us and uh, aerial refuel us so we don't have to stop. Oh, you'll air refuel. We sure will. And there's wow. all six right there at once. Yeah, that's one of the great capabilities of uh, you know all of our, our combat aircraft uh, in order to uh, remain on station. But most importantly for us to try and land on an aircraft carrier, uh, if it's not going very well, you can't just pull over to the side of the road with a gas can and top off. So uh, we have uh, organic refueling uh, aircraft on the aircraft carrier, and we can get gas airborne so that we can extend our uh, our combat radius. What was? Do you remember what it was like the first time you were? part of landing on an aircraft carrier. I was long for the ride. Uh, yes. You know, that is one of the people ask me, I'm a pretty horrible backseat driver in a car, <laughs> and now I've got my life in another man's hands uh, as he's landing a, a multi-million dollar for the aircraft first time, right? on, a, uh, on an aircraft carrier. So, again, a lot of training goes into landing on an aircraft carrier. You don't just get out there on the first day and try and land on a boat. 
a lot of uh, touch and goes on a, on a regular runway at an airport. Uh, and there's guys out there grading you, making sure that you're capable before they send you to the boat. So right. that was the loop ray cross. They're rendezvousing now for one of the final uh, maneuvers of our demonstration. And this is what's known as the Delta Breakout. This is that starburst yes. uh, formation as they break apart. Oh, and you kept beautiful day in there. Yeah, music. that I was one that. of the, there were yes. a couple that we couldn't get rid of, and uh, that was certainly one of them. It is a beautiful day. Remember, you have the Blue Angels in town. No matter what show it is, it's always a great show. And this is kind of neat for those, uh, you know, if you're down on the waterfront, the jets actually go behind uh, the terrain there for a little bit. So if you're right there at center point, you can't see where the jets are. And then as they uh, also say a little pool and they'll climb up from behind the trees as they break out. So let's take a look to the east. I'm looking, are we, am I looking the right way? You let's are, see. it's okay. gonna be right over that hill. All right. And there they go. Isn't that gorgeous? That was awesome. It was. Again, well, I see this seven times a week. Uh, for two years, and it still gives me goosebumps and chills. So Aww. it is truly an honor to be here with you guys. And this was their final one, or was there one more? Well, they're going to rendezvous. This typically, if we were back at an airport, they would come around and, and uh, do the pitch up break to land. But they're going to rendezvous behind the crowd. They'll do the Delta flat pass as kind of a uh, farewell maneuver. All six joined up. They'll come around from the south and uh, pass in front of the crowd to say goodbye. And then They'll head over to Boeing Field. And what's unique about this show site is that Boeing Field is so close that you still have a little bit of the air show when they go to land okay. uh, because they're going to come over the runway. Right. And as they break out, they'll actually come fairly close back to center point as they're in the landing pattern. So now that you've been part of the team, what, what can you share with us? Any any weird routines anyone that has before uh, they go uh, on nope. that you can share? Oh, you're not going to spill Nothing it Nothing I can share. <laughs> you know, it's uh, the no. lucky penny in the pocket. <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, a lot of dedication uh, and, and that strive for perfection. Well, you're yeah. a good team member. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of classified information. You know, right. We're all in the military. I, I can't spill those beans. Well, I tried. <laughs> it's a good effort. I commend you. Now, the Blue Angels on Twitter? We sure are. Yes, we've got a Twitter account and a Facebook page, so come on out and see us. It's hashtag Blue Angels, Absolutely. possibly. It's a good guess. It was a great show. This was the, the second of two shows in the area, but really you feel like we have four because you practice on Thursdays oh, and yeah. Fridays, so it's nice. Yeah. And there's the Delta Flat Pass. There's smoke on. They're going to exit to the north and then head on back to Boeing Field. And again, the rest of the folks out there that have been camped out, they get, uh, they get to enjoy the rest of the air show because they'll still do that, uh, that precise walk down. Uh, and walk, you know, they march out to the jets. They salute their crew chiefs. They get in, and then they march all the way back until they drop that final salute. So and that's it. Those are the Blue Angels 2012. There you go. And we cannot be more excited to be back in 2013. Yes. This was a very quick weekend. You hear the applause uh, and the crowd. But we're ready to come back. The salute. That was fantastic. And even when they get off the plane, that part of it is rehearsed as well, oh, absolutely. right? They're going to walk in the, sync. They're, the, you know, when that. people join the Blue Angels, they say, okay, we're going to jump right into the jet and, uh, and start flying and practicing. The first thing they practice is walking to the jet in, <laughs> in formation. Um, you know, they, they critique whether the salutes go up and down at the same time, uh, whether they're in step uh, simultaneously as they sit down together, uh, stand up together as they walk back and drop that final salute. So now again, some start of the, to finish. Now, some of the team we saw today will be back next year. Some will sure move will. on as yes. you're moving on. I am. And the current team actually gets to select, help select the next team, right? Yes, we just selected the uh, 2013 officers uh, back in July. So uh, we've got, we'll have a new commanding officer. He was actually mm -hmm. selected uh, in May. And then we'll have a new right, uh, correction, a new left wingman. And then um, we'll have a new number seven. So Mark will move somewhere into the diamond for, or into the delta. So we'll have three new demonstration pilots next year. Okay. And how do you go about, when there's so many good pilots, how do you go about picking? Because you, you're part of that process as well, uh, right? Yes, it is difficult, you know. Um, there's an interview process. It's a week long. Uh, we've got a week long of fun uh, functions, as well as professional reputation. You know, their ex-Blue Angels are back in the fleet. 
uh, and they've flown with some of these guys and uh, some of the enlisted personnel and our support officers. So uh, we do a lot of background checking to make sure that we're getting the right fit for the team. And we travel so much, we want to make sure our personalities mesh so that we can carry on you know, that professional demonstration in everything that we do. You spend a lot of time together for sure. We sure do. A lot of shows. Lieutenant Commander Todd Royals, it has been such a pleasure working with you. It Last was year great. was a blast. I know. This year, the same thing. Wish you the best. You said you're going to Japan, right? We are. We're going to move to Japan in the spring and uh, back to an operational squadron there in Anatsugi. So okay. I can't wait. Well, you did a great job doing Thanks this. Thanks for having me. It was a great me. show. We had so much fun. It was awesome. And we still have a lot more Seafair action here. So stay with us. We're right back.